Sit back for a moment and think of three words that the American Cancer Society estimates approximately 11,714,000 people in the United States heard in 2007. You have cancer. A sinking feeling begins and your imagination cannot begin to encompass the real feeling a cancer patient experiences. I don't know what it's like to hear those words, but I do know how it feels to have someone you care about go through this. During my senior year of high school, my parents sat me down the day after prom to tell me some news. I was hoping the information would be about a MacBook Pro I really wanted, but unfortunately, I was extremely wrong. My dad had squamous cell carcinoma, which is a type of skin cancer. My mind began to spin. The person I saw as my protector now needed help and protection. I knew there were changes in his appearance, but I had no idea the cause was so extreme. Doctors in town had removed the lump from his neck, but there were traces of the cancer within his lymph nodes. They informed him that he needed treatments of chemotherapy and radiation at the Emory Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. My parents would be gone five days a week for three months and they were unsure if my dad could make it to my graduation. Graduation became the last thing on my mind and my dad's health was the first. I didn't know what to expect about his progress with the treatments or what I could do to help, so I decided to find out more about what he will experience. A rush of emotions runs through a person's body when they first hear that they have cancer. Spiegel and Klassen explain that the illness itself is understandably stressful, carrying with it the threat of death, the need for uncomfortable and possibly disfiguring treatments, and the disruption of everyday life. Without being in the situation, a person cannot fully understand the fear cancer can bring. Cancer is essentially the body turning on itself of normal cells, becoming enemies and attacking others, Spiegel and Klassen report. Cancer can also cause pain through treatments and tumors, causing patients to become more susceptible to greater levels of depression, stress, and irritability. Doctors have tried to find ways to decrease these negative factors, and they have found support groups as a helpful solution. A cancer patient needs as much support he or she can receive during such a traumatic experience. Melcor Beaupre explains that a patient should acquire at least two types of support groups, including a support comfort team and a medical psychosocial team. The comfort team for a patient includes people of close relations, such as friends and family. Patients are advised to keep their relationships with their family and friends strong. Having a good time will relieve the patient of stress and depress thoughts of their struggles. The other group consists of medical professionals. Social interaction is an extremely important factor throughout the life of a person. Cancer has the capability of defeating a person's self-esteem and creating feelings of loneliness on unusual levels. When in need of comfort and company, creating support groups help tend to these needs and provides a better understanding of the typical cancer process. Spiegel and Klassen state that the support groups, including members from different stages of the cancer process, also benefit patients to realize their feelings are not exceptions, but a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. My dad maintained the two main social groups doctors advised. He created a great support group with the doctors and nurses at Emory Hospital who helped him tremendously throughout this draining process. The author of Psychological Aspects of Coping with Cancer explains the importance of having a medical psychosocial team for the purposes of coordinating treatments and assessing a patient's needs. My dad also had a grandiose support team of friends, family, and those within their networks. With the help and support from others, my dad did not suffer the psychological troubles of cancer greatly and prevailed as a one in a million patient, according to one of his nurses at Emory.